invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> When Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventure. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, there's one thing very good about America. Even though I'm a live all alone, I'm a never feel a lonesome. Because every morning I'm going to get lots of mail from people I don't know. Asking me to buy things I'm going to need with the money I'm going to get. <laughs> Still, those letters, they're very interesting to read. This morning is a letter from an eye doctor. He says if I'm a see spots, I'm sure to come and see him. I'm going to think he's a funny kind of eye doctor who's also do cleaning work. <laughs> Also, I'm going to get a letter from an accident and insurance company who is a very kind of hearted. They offer me $1,000 if I'm a break a leg. <laughs> Even better than that, they give me $5,000 if I'm a break a two leg. <laughs> and the best of all is their biggest offer. $10,000 if I'm a stop for teasing them and adjust the die. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Mamma Mia. That's a funny thing. Just when I'm going to write to you about my mailer, here comes my mailer man. Good evening, Mr. Basco. Special delivery letter for you. A letter for me in the night time? Hmm. That accident and insurance the companies are getting anxious. Here, sign right here. All right. Uh, capital L U I G I. Capital B A S C O. Period. Oop, broke your point. Well, that's all right. Government can afford it. So they'll buy one battleship less. <laughs> hey. Is it from the city zone in the commission? What the friend is a right to me a letter from a dad? It's not a friend, Mr. Biasco. When there's no stamp on the envelope, it's official business. Good night. <laughs> official business? Well, this I'm going to like. Now, let me see. There's a representative from this department to be at your establishment tomorrow 4 p.m. This is in a reference to section 562J, Article 43. If for any reason you are unable to see our representative at this time, please notify us immediately so that we may arrange another appointment. Mamma mia, I'm going to take this right to my night school class and find out what this is mean. City zone in the commission. Why are they making me trouble? I wonder if could it be they see me crossing the street and I'm not in a safety zone. <laughs> Quiet, class, class. That's better. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Howitt? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? You gotta ask? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, if you're here, just say present. And if I'm not here, what do I say? Absent? <laughs> Thank you, fellow boobers. <laughs> oh, I'm so bright you could plug me in a socket. <laughs> All right, Mr. Schultz. Crazy. Now, class, let's start our lesson. Uh, Excuse uh, me, Miss Spalding. Uh, just now I got this letter from a disowning oh, commission. Please, Mr. Basco, after class. But uh, the letter can wait. Sure, what's a letter got to do? Tell it to close its flap and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> our lesson today is on poetry appreciation. Yeah. Now, uh, open your books to page 89. Yeah. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. All right. Now, Mr. Horowitz, you may read the first stanza. A pleasure. It is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three. By thy long gray beard and glittering eye, now wherefore stops thou me? That's very good. Now, Mr. Horowitz, will you tell us in your own words what you just read? Certainly. The way I see it, this ancient mariner, whoever he was... Yes, but who was he? I don't know. But the whole idea is he stopped one out of three. Must have been the motorcycle cop. <laughs> no, no. Now, you all should have been prepared by reading this poem at home. Now, Mr. Basco, will you please explain that stanza? Well, at this ancient man, he's getting a letter from the city zoning commission. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I sympathize with your problem, but please try to concentrate. Uh, Miss Balding, why should we waste valuable time? 
If you don't mind, I would like to step in and clear up the whole situation by giving the correct answer. There he goes. Sweden's answer to it pays to be ignorant. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Go on. Yeah. Well, first, I would like to read that poem over again with the correct intonation so the class can appreciate it. Well, Mr. It Olson... is an ancient mariner, and he stopped at one of three. By thy long gray beard and glittering eye, now therefore stops thou me. Olson, if you keep stopping that mariner, he ain't never going to leave port. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, and learn something. Now, th that's old sea captain. He, he sees three men walking, and he stops one of them. Uh, this fella gets angry, and he says, Why are you stopping me? Don't you fuss, because a fella wants a light. <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Schultz. Now, Mr. Basco, will you please explain the next section? Oh, I'm glad that you're asking me, Miss Pauling. Is a section of 5 or 62 J. What? But it says it here, right in this letter. Oh, all right, let me see it. Um... Dear sir, representative of the reason I was to notify about the appointment. Well, so far it sounds very dull. <laughs> well, Miss Bosinger, what am I doing wrong? Mr. Basco, I see nothing in this letter to become alarmed about. You're merely getting a business visit from the zoning commission. Luigi, you shouldn't get so upset. You don't, don't cross your bridges till you come to them. Well, you save a lot of toll charges that way. <laughs> Ah, Luigi, stop looking so depressed. Smile. Miss Bodding, Miss Bodding, what is it? This is zoning a commission. What do they do? Uh, Luigi, oftentimes when the city has to build a, a new structure or something like that, they have to rezone the neighborhood so they go to the storekeeper for permission. Yes, that's right, Mr. Basco. Oh, well, I'm a feel better already. Oh, sure, Luigi, smile. Look at the worst. What can they do? Can they build a subway through your store? Can they put a lamppost outside your window and should shine in your eyes all night? Can they stick a fire hydrant outside your store? You should hear sirens screaming day or night. But a Schultz, can they? Certainly. The city's got to have a little fun, too. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, what's the matter? Why are you cleaning up your store so much? You expected a company, little banana nose? <laughs> That's right, Pasquale. Tomorrow is a coming a man from a zoning commission. See, look, I'm going to get this letter. Let me look. Good. All right. Hey, but Pasquale, you can't read without your glasses. Why don't you put them on? What for? I'm not going to read English anyway. <laughs> <laughs> look, he believes in the little pumpkin ahead. I'm going to know all about English. Let me see. I'm going to read that. Uh, Act 18. What's this Act? <laughs> Pasquale, act is abbreviation. That's for October. Look who's a teacher to what, the how. <laughs> I'm gonna know all about abbreviations, too. October is a OCT, November is a NOV, and a December is a DESS. <laughs> now, you be quiet, let me finish this letter. Uh, I gotta see him. Uh, bad, bad. <sighs> No, Pasquale, now stop trying to scare me. My teacher, Miss Spalding, has already told me there's nothing to worry about. Ah, your teacher's a towel here, eh? Your teacher. Well, you Pas go to everybody. I suppose Olson and Schultz, they tell you too, eh? No, but Pasquale... Look, Luigi, uh, why are you always running around to everybody for advice like a crazy little puppy looking for a bone when all the time you could have come straight to me? Fellow who's brought you from the older country and is sitting here with that bone in his head. <laughs> Pasquale, you're so right. You're the only bonehead I ever see. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> Luigi, you know me. I'm never like to worry you. But I just thought the why this is zone and the fellas are coming to see you. You sleep in the back of your store, no? Yeah, something wrong with that? There's everything wrong. Your store ain't a residence. You're not supposed to be sleeping in that. What? Wait till the zone and the commissions to find out how you're sleeping in that little room with one window, always breathing the same air, in and out, in and out. That's to make a carbon dioxide. You know what that's to mean? What? You're making the oxide a dye. <laughs> Ever hear a man slaughter? Yes, sir. Well, are you guilty or worse than that? Air slaughter. <laughs> Luigi, for this, you're liable to get the electric chair. What? 
Pasquale, why you never told me this? Because I'm going to want to be an accessory to the crime. <laughs> if I was a told to you, I would also get the chair, and that would embarrass the state very much. They ain't got no two-seaters. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, you're just uh, making the things up. All right, all right. Maybe I'm aware of too far. But one of thing is for sure. You're not going to sleep in the back of your store. They're going to throw you out. But, Pasquale, where am I going to go? <laughs> where can you go? Luigi, you always got a home with me. With you? Yes, you lucky popsy, you. <laughs> right on the first floor of my house, I'm a got a little room as I got a two towels. Master his and a hers. <laughs> Winter beds, the service for two. And this a little room, I'm always a keep empty. Pasquale, why you keep this room empty? <laughs> <laughs> it's my daughter Rose is a hope of chest. <laughs> What do you say, my son? <laughs> Keep a hope in the pop. <laughs> oh, look, Luigi, why don't you be nice? You know, anything I'm a god in the world, you can have. Anything? Just mention her name and it's yours. <laughs> Pasquale, my answer is a no. All right. All right. Now your troubles is a really start. Tomorrow, zone and a man is a come. He's a want to throw you out. He's a coming to me for character reference. I gotta tell him you're guilty on a two counts. One is sleeping in the back of your store, and a two, alien and not a showing affection for my daughter. <laughs> Mother Pasquale, what's so wrong with that? Plenty. That's an alienation of affection. <laughs> no, Pasquale, you wouldn't have tell me those are bad things. You I wouldn't tell, have tell everything, no. everything I tell him. They're gonna throw you out of Chicago. Nobody's a one of you. You're a man without a country. Walter Winchell is a talk about you. You want to run away someplace to forget. Gabriel Heath is a say, there's only one place an immigrant can go. Who had it, Pasquale? Morocco, the foreigner's allegiance. <laughs> Luigi continues in just a moment, but first, for some bright presents for you, Bergen and Charlie and Red Skelton are now yours on Sunday nights. Bing Crosby, Groucho Marx, Burns and Allen, they're yours now on Wednesday nights. And next Tuesday night, those of you who never want to miss a thrill will find Mr. and Mrs. North and Mystery Theater joined by a third famous thriller, Escape. An hour and a half of excitement, adventure, and chills up the back. Mr. and Mrs. North, Mystery Theater, and Escape on most of these same CBS stations every Tuesday night starting next week. And now for the second act of Luigi Vasco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, your Luigi is to find out the why when from a zoning commission is a coming to my store. Seems like it's not legal when you live in a business district to sleep in the back of your store. I want to very much to be good American and obey the law. So all last night, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sit up and read a book. This book is about Abraham Lincoln, great man who was born in a log cabin and has walked 10 miles to school. Of course, he's going to do both the things on the same day. Then I was thinking to myself... What would a Lincoln do if they was going to throw him out of his log cabin? Then I'm going to think is a foolish question. Lincoln don't live in a business district. <laughs> so I'm sitting here figuring what I should do when suddenly the door is open up. Luigi, my fellow poop. Now what are you looking so sad about? You found out why the zoning commission is coming to see you? Well, Pasquale has said because I'm asleep in the back of my store, oh. I'm a killer dioxide. So even if I'm going to get to the electric chair, I'm going to take a two-seater in the foreign legion. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmered? <laughs> Why do you got to believe everything that Pasquale tells you? For sure. Then, then they can't throw me out for sleeping in the back of my store? Well, of course, that's a horse from a different jockey. <laughs> if it's a business neighborhood, they can throw you out. Then I sure so where am I going to live? Now, smile where you're going to live. You're going to come and live with me. Oh, you're going to love it living with my happy little family, Luigi. That's me, my wife, my three children, my brother Ludwig, his cousin Hugo, my uncle Jack, the three nephews, my grandfather Wolfgang, and the rest of the family. 
Well, thank you, Schultz, but you always are so crowded. No, no, don't worry, Luigi. We just got it a new apartment, much bigger than the old one. How many rooms do you got there? Uh, two. <laughs> well, Schultz, how is it possible for so many people to sleep in two rooms? Who sleeps? <laughs> well, what fun. Every night, you know, is a pajama party. The party that feels cold gets the pajama. <laughs> Want to sleep? Oh, there's beds plenty. The couch opens up into a big bed. The chairs open up to beds. The ironing board is a bed. The ironing board? Certainly. There's nothing better for a short person with a sacroiliac. <laughs> also, we got a Morris chair that's a bed. And the bureau drawers, we open up for the kiddies. And my grandfather Wolfgang, he sleeps in the bathtub. <laughs> but you see, we got plenty of beds. For a Schultz. Schultz, any you got a one in a real bed in the house? Oh, sure, sure. But that we used to hold up the television set. <laughs> no, smile, Luigi. I'm just trying to cheer you up. Well, thanks, thanks, Schultz. You're a wonderful friend to think of me. But is it too crowded in your house? Oh. Maybe you know where I'm going to find a place to live? Well, it's very hard these days to find something, but why don't you look in the newspaper? That's a good idea, Schultz. I'm a look. Good. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, uh -huh. Look, here's something. Uh -huh. It's a very cheap, but I'm not going to take it. Huh? What does it say? 55 cents all a day. Come to the stable. <laughs> you mean you got a riding academy? Oh. No, no, read, read in the back where it says room. Oh. All right, the way. Uh -huh. uh, here's the one short. Yeah, well. One room to suitable young man. No cooking, no drinking, no children, no pets, no visitors. Luigi, that apartment you take only on one condition. What's that? No then? rent. <laughs> What's the use, Luigi? Get a rental agent. Let him do the worrying, and he'll find you an apartment. A rental agent? Schultz, sure, so where am I going to find him? Well, you look in the phone book. There's a million of them. All right, Schultz. Sure, so thanks for your help. I'm going to start looking right away. Good. Uh, well, i got to go now. Uh, Cheer up, Luigi. Be like me. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Well, Mr. Basco, just what sort of apartment did you have in mind? Well, what do you got there? Well, that's a cooperative attitude. As a matter of fact, I have an apartment that came in only ten minutes ago. Well, mommy, that's America. You don't come to the apartment, the apartment is a coming to you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> this is a lovely four-room apartment with all modern conveniences, including a sunken living room. A what? A sunken living room. What's the matter? House has got a weaker foundation? No. Was an earthquake? No, it's just a sunken living room. Oh, sure, I'm gonna. Was a party in the house and the people is a dancer too high? <laughs> Mr. Vasco, you can't be serious. No. A sunken living room is an extra feature. It's a room that's built lower than the rest of the house. Why? Why, it's, uh, it's lower than the, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a room. Uh, uh, yeah. Everybody does it. <laughs> everybody wants a sunken living room, yes. Everybody does it, everybody wants a sunken That's living room. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm gonna want it. <laughs> With this a sunken living room, when you're standing in the hallway, everybody else is a look like a midget. <laughs> Maybe you got an apartment that would have sunk in a kitchen? <laughs> sunken kitchen? Why would anybody want that? Well, if you bake a cake and it's a razor too high, it's a still a look even. <laughs> Mr. Basco, we're not going to rebuild apartments just for you. As a matter of fact, you can't be too choosy. No. Don't you know all over the country there's a shortage of apartments? Good, well, that's just for me. I'm a live alone, all I'm in need is a short apartment. <laughs> Well, let's see if you can't make a selection. Here's the one that just came... I mean, I just received. Oh. Four rooms, exquisitely furnished, two baths, stall shower, marble fireplace, and chrome kitchen. I'm gonna want that. Why not? Says there's nothing about the hot and the cold running the water. Of course it has hot and cold running water. The apartment rents for $150. $150, that's not for me. Is it too much? Uh, well, I have something else for $140. Of course, it's smaller. Smaller? Well, here's something for 130, but you'll be a little cramped. Cramped? Well, what do you say? 
Squeeze me tighter for twenty dollars. <laughs> $20. Mr. Basco, you couldn't get a place anywhere in the country. You'll have to go higher. $22.50? Mr. Basco, you're thinking of pre-war OPA prices. Now, if you want to get an apartment today, it's got to be one without a ceiling. Without a ceiling? That's right. What's to happen if it's a rain? I suppose... I suppose at the end of they charge you more money, huh? Why? Sunk in a living room as it turned into a swimming pool. <laughs> oh, Mamma mia. How mad that the rental agent has got to me. I hope I'm doing the right thing or going straight to the zone in the commission. Maybe I'm going to confess everything. I'm going to tell them, I'm sure I'm asleep in the back, but I'm a very light to sleeper. Then maybe they want to be so mad at me. Ah, here's the place. 800 North the Commercial Boulevard. That's a funny. It's a no say zone in the commission. It's a say Department of Public Works. Mamma mia, that the building is a look too smaller for the whole of public who should have worked there. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm a. I'm across to the street and I go inside. Hey, why don't you watch where you're going? Uh, Mamma mia, how he knows where I'm going? There must be somebody who's watching me. Maybe Pasquale is right. Or maybe I make a mistake at the Gwyneth Sand and the start up with the government. Man is a libel to say. Mr. Basco, is it true that ever since you've been here, you've broken the law? Oh, please, I'm a like to explain. Don't explain, just answer the question. I'm a like to do. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Italy and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. Flash, which one of your countrymen has been sleeping where in the back of what in violation of which? Answer the question, Mr. Basco. Have you ever slept in the back of your store? Please, I'm a like to explain. Don't explain, just answer yes. Oh, yes, there's bad news tonight. <laughs> Somewhere in this big land of ours, an ungrateful, complaining immigrant stands ready to hear the verdict of a blue ribbon jury. What jury will testify when, where, and what, which, about who? Please, I'm a like to, I'm a like to, Mr. I'm a like to. Mr. Basco, it is the opinion of this court that you be sentenced. Hey, Luigi. Hello, Pasquale. Luigi, look at you. Face is a clammy, you pants and the clothes all mussed up, a tie twisted around your neck, a hair in your eyes. You look like a footballer just to come out of the Army and Navy game. Pasquale, I'm going to have a terrible time. I thought I would leave it quietly and not make it a trouble. But I'm not going to afford a room, and when I went to the zone in the commission to confess everything, I'm going to frighten and I'm going to come back. Pasquale, it looks like for me is no road out. <laughs> Don't say that to Luigi. He's always the one who rode out. Huh? Sure. Rosa. <laughs> Basquale, that's no road. It's a road to block. <laughs> Luigi, zone and the fellas are coming any minute. Do you want to suffer the consequences or you want I should save you? Pasquale, I'm a got no choice. Oh, Luigi, that's the nicest proposal I've ever heard. You're not going to be sorry. I'm going to call it a blush of the bride now. Rosa! 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 <laughs> Come here, my little bunny rabbit. Rosa? Say hello to Luigi. Hello, <laughs> 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 Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa, Luigi's gonna marry you. how I feel. Now, Rosa, you two seal the bargain. Come on, Rosa, let me see a nice big kiss. <laughs> Not to me, it's <laughs> Luigi. Go ahead. Uh, pardon me, do you know where I can find Mr. Luigi Basco? Oh, you must be zoning the commissioner, Fallon. That's right. I'm uh, pleased to make you acquaintanceship. Uh, 
And uh, this is a Mr. Bosco here, but I'm going to take a full responsibility for his crime. Crime? What crime? Sleeping in the back of his store. Well, that's no crime. This is a C4 zone, residential and business. Mr. Basco can sleep anywhere he wants to. What do you say? Then why you sent me that letter yesterday with the 5, 5, 5 or 6 to 2 J? Well, Mr. Basco, 5, 6, 2 J is in reference to the coming election. You see, formerly our off-year elections were held in the barber shop on the next block, but uh, since he went out of business, we'd like to use your store as a voting place. I came down for your permission to install polling booths. Mamma mia, what an honor. For the government, I do anything. You can even install the telephone booths. <laughs> Well, uh, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, wait, uh, and about the sleeping. Uh, I'm going to sleep all I want to? Uh? Of course. Good. Then I'm going to go right to now into my store and take a nap. Well, goodbye. Hey, Luigi. Hey. Good day, sir. Thank you for your help. Hey, Luigi. Oh, that a Luigi. Every time I'm a got him into my grab, he's a getaway. Well, Papa, don't worry. The marriage would have been annulled anyway. Huh? What are you talking about? Well, you know that room you're saving with the towels marked his and hers? Yes. Yesterday, I wiped my hands with his. Be sure to listen next Tuesday at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conry as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olson. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Bob Stevenson speaking. Stay tuned now for Hit the Jackpot, which follows immediately over most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.